So I'm headed up to go see Jurassic World Dominion. This is one of my most anticipated movies of the year. I really don't know what to expect, though. Jurassic Park and Jurassic World movies have a tendency to disappoint me, but I always go in absolutely pumped. So will this be one that's an amazing film like Jurassic Park? Will it be a dumb but fun movie like Jurassic World? Or will it just be another disappointment with dinosaurs in it? I'm not really sure. I'm just so excited that we're getting the original cast with the new cast interacting. That's what I can't wait to see. I'm going to go see it, then I'm going to let you know what I thought. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comments section. Share your excitement level for Jurassic World Dominion, or if you've seen it, what did you think about it? This is a spoiler-free review, so please don't spoil anything down below in the comments section. One more thing before we get started, this video is brought to you by Audible. You can get a free audiobook of your choice by signing up for a free 30-day trial of Audible at audibletrial.com slash Sean Chandler. Last month, I re-listened to Jurassic Park on Audible. I'm currently re-listening to The Lost World on Audible. I do recommend checking both of them out. So if you want to listen to one of them for free, you can do so by signing up for a free trial of Audible at audibletrial.com slash Sean Chandler. Let's get started with the good. And right off the bat, the big selling point for this film is that dinosaurs are all over the world as well as the return of the cast members from the original Jurassic Park trilogy. And both of those things are an awful lot of fun to see. This movie's scope, scale, size is dramatically bigger than any other film in this franchise. We're on multiple continents. We're hopping from city to city. We're all kinds of different terrain and dinosaurs show up wherever we're at because dinosaurs are everywhere in this film. And so it just feels like an actual Jurassic World film because that's what's taking place. And because of that, you get to see dinosaurs showing up in very normal environments, the sort of places that you and I go to. There's like news broadcasts all throughout the film kind of discussing the ramifications of everything taking place and how they're trying to coexist, what the government is doing, how corporations are getting involved. It just kind of takes where the last film ended and it actually plays that out and you get to see dinosaurs all over the world. And then of course, the other big selling point here is the return of the big three from the original Jurassic Park. And Grant and Sadler are co-leads in the film that have their own main plot line that runs parallel to what Owen is doing and then the plots merge together. Malcolm isn't quite as prominent in the film. Uh, he is shows up many times throughout it. He's a scene stealer. He gets to do the stuff that you want to see him do with all the speeches and the preaching and the Jeff Gold, Goldblumisms. You get all the stuff that you want from Malcolm. He just doesn't have as much screen time as the other two who have, like, they are the leads of a plot line and he's a supporting character in their plot line in the film. But it's just great to see them again. Uh, they bring a certain gravitas. It's nice to just even see what they've been up to, their response to the events of the Jurassic World films. They kind of continue some plot lines that were established in the original trilogy of films, kind of play a few things out. So there's some really nice touches and there's some moments that are really great. In general, it's just great to see them on screen again, doing their thing. They're great characters. I love to see more of them. And right along those same lines, when you start to see the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World cast members interacting with each other and their knowledge of one another, their respect for one another, those are just kind of neat moments to finally see play out on screen that if you're a fan of this franchise, you're curious, like, what do they think of each other? How will that play out? And you get to see it happen in this film. Another thing I enjoyed about this film is that it ties back to the original Jurassic Park in ways I wasn't expecting. Obviously, you have the returning cast members, but it dives into like the corporate espionage, corruption that was even more prominent in the book as well, especially in The Lost World, it dives into some of that stuff and that becomes a major element in this film. And I appreciated that they went for some of those deeper cuts and tied it all back together. Also, as this is a movie with a big, gigantic, grand scale to it, 
There's some huge action sequences. You can just in the trailer, you see Owen in multiple continents, multiple cities on all, multiple types of vehicles, running from dinosaurs, chasing dinosaurs, riding a horse, lassoing a dinosaur. You get all the big dinosaur spectacle that you want from a Jurassic World film with a variety in the nature of what takes place. So all that stuff that you want. You get it. And by this point in time, Chris Pratt is a well-established action hero. So he's very good doing all the stuff that you want Owen to do in action sequences, interacting with dinosaurs. All of it plays out here. And just finally, this is a comfort franchise for me. I love these movies even when they're not good movies. Going to this world of dinosaurs, seeing dinosaurs brought back to life. I have fun with it. In the worst of the Jurassic Park films, I love to go back into this world. And so even that's the case here, just getting to spend more time in this world on such a big, a grand scale, that's enjoyable for me. Especially when you have all these characters returning from the original trilogy with the people from the Jurassic World franchise all blending together. It's all the stuff that I like mashed together in one movie. But this is very, very, very far from the original Jurassic Park. This is a monster B-movie with a bunch of characters from the Jurassic World and Jurassic Park franchises. So let's move on to the mixed aspects of the film. And genre-wise, this movie is an enormous departure from all the other movies in the franchise. This is like a globetrotting spy thriller with dinosaurs thrown into the mix. When the credits started rolling, I went to go see it with my my neighbor and he goes, that was like a Mission Impossible movie with dinosaurs. And that's not a bad comparison. It's new, it's massive in size and scale, it's different, but it's also kind of bizarre. I mean, you have all these plot lines about the CIA getting involved, there's shootouts. It's just a very different type of movie from what you expect from a Jurassic Park film. So it's not a rehash, it's definitely something new, but it's very odd for a Jurassic Park, Jurassic World movie to feel so much like a spy thriller and have so much overt espionage front and center to the plot of the film. From there, let's move on to the bad. And we've got quite a few problems with this movie, but I think the underlying issue here is that the movie is built on a faulty foundation. What I mean by that is the Jurassic World movies have always been a little bit too preoccupied, too fixated on other uses of genetic engineering. So then Jurassic World isn't just about the park being brought to, back to life and actually existing. It's about them genetically engineering a new dinosaur that's in fact just a monster. And then we get to Fallen Kingdom and we have another new genetically engineered dinosaur monster thing, as well as human cloning. In fact, Jurassic World starts off with a scene where Claire explains that people aren't excited by dinosaurs anymore. They need to make a new one. But consumers want them bigger, louder, more teeth. And that's in fact what the movie itself was doing it, by creating the creature because they thought the audiences wanted something even bigger and scarier. And I think that's an entirely faulty premise. The appeal of these movies has always been seeing dinosaurs. T-Rex and Velociraptor and all the other ones that are based off the bones we've been studying for 100 years will always be more interesting and compelling to me than their fake made up monster creatures. And all those monster creatures just transition this franchise into just a monster franchise instead of being dinosaur movies. And that's not as interesting to me. So this movie is built on that foundation, and it's the culmination of all of that. And what that means is the plot line is about locusts and about human cloning and all this corporate espionage. All of that takes front and center to close out this trilogy of films. And it means the dinosaurs actually end up on the back burner. Dinosaurs are everywhere in this movie. There's all sorts of dinosaur chases, fights, and everything like that. But when it comes to the actual plot, 
It's about locusts, human cloning, and corporate corruption. Dinosaurs are just in the backdrop. They're in the setting. They're not the focus of the plot itself. And I think that inherently makes this movie less interesting than it should be. And that flawed foundation and premise for this film lead to many of the other problems with the movie. So the big draw of this film is that we bring back our big trio from Jurassic Park. And Alan Grant, Sadler are great characters that are nuanced, that are very competent with a certain set of things. But when you bring dinosaur experts and a paleobotanist and put them into corporate espionage movie, they are the wrong characters for the plot that they've been dropped into. So the explanation as to how they get wrapped up into this plot and why Grant is there makes absolutely no sense. And therefore, when they're in the middle of their adventure that they're on, it doesn't use any of their actual skills because they're the wrong characters for this plot. Therefore, even though you see a lot of Alan Grant, he's unbelievably underutilized because he is not in his element. He is not doing the thing that he's good at that makes him compelling, such a great character, such an exciting, fun character in Jurassic Park. And I mean, even in Jurassic Park 3, he was the right character for a movie that wasn't great. But he's not the right character for this movie. It's just fun to see him, but they don't belong in this spy thriller, espionage, corporate corruption movie because that's not his skill set. That's not what makes him compelling. He's just from Jurassic Park and you wanted to big your, do your big team up movie. So you found a really bad excuse to drop him in this movie. It's very peculiar to watch. And I think that leads to the other big problem here is that this feels like every other modern generic blockbuster where everything has to just be cranked up to 11. Everyone has to be cracking jokes. And when you see these characters that became so iconic to popular culture back in 1993 dropped into a 21st century blockbuster, you immediately notice this in the way that they talk, the way that everyone's a little bit quippier, everyone kind of feels a little bit dumber, everyone is a little bit more indestructible. You have like 70 year old Alan Grant is in this movie and there's sequences where he's like getting knocked off of things and getting bonked on the head and he keeps kicking as if none of this is a big deal because I mean, everyone's a destructible. We're in a blockbuster, right? Everyone's got plot armor. Everything has to be ratcheted up to insane levels. So, I mean, like not only are we being chased by dinosaurs, but everything's on fire and everything's exploding and there's vehicles crash crashing. And you just go back to the original Jurassic Park, one of the great blockbusters of all time, one of the great thrillers of all time. And the big memorable set piece in the third act is two children crawling through a kitchen trying to avoid raptors. No big spectacle to it, really. Just great thrills. In this one, everything just has to be overblown to crazy levels. And it fits certain sequences, and other times it's just... They're adding in 21st century overblown spectacle to everything. And to make all of this happen, to combine the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World characters together, to have all this insane spectacle and have all of it happen at the same time, everything has the flimsiest and laziest reasons for taking place. Like if you just stop and think like, what are the odds that the, this person and this person would happen to be the ones that happen to meet up at this particular moment in re regards to this thing and this thing? It's total nonsense. It only happens because the movie requires it to happen because it wants to do a team up movie. It wants to be globe trotting. It wants to have massive spectacle and they don't come up with good enough reasons for why these characters are there, why all of this stuff is happening. So by the end of it, to me, it just felt like fun Jurassic Park fan fiction. It does not at all feel true to the original Jurassic Park like this is a reasonable continuation of that. It just feels like someone making a wish list of things that they want to see in a Jurassic Park, Jurassic World movie. Let's mash all the characters together. Let's be on a bunch of different continents. And it rings very hollow. And it does the strangest thing that it makes dinosaurs boring 
set dressing. They don't even feel dangerous anymore. And that's frustrating. I, I wasn't bored. I had fun. But this is far from a good movie. Real quick, before I give you my final thoughts, be sure to join me down below in the comment section. Share your thoughts on the movie if you've seen it. If you haven't, what's your excitement level for it? Also, I'm gonna have more Jurassic World coverage coming this weekend. Spoiler review, rankings, all of that fun stuff. Be sure to come back to check it out. In the end, I love spending time in this world with these characters, seeing dinosaurs brought back to life on the big screen. But the story that they gave us is so bogged down in plot lines about locusts, human cloning, and corporate corruption and espionage that it forgets that the focus is supposed to be on dinosaurs. And also because of that, despite a couple of our returning characters being on screen quite a bit, they don't really fit in the movie that they're in and their skill set does not match this adventure. And so it's a very bizarre experience that I had fun with, but I can't say was good. Overall, it's a C plus, but I'll go a little higher on the entertainment scale with a seven out of 10. And this is one that if you're gonna see it, probably should see it on the big screen, but you can wait to stream this one. Be sure to come back this weekend. I'm gonna have more Jurassic World content, including a ranking of the movies. Also, if you wanna to listen to Jurassic Park or The Lost World for free, you can get your free audiobook at the link down below in the description, audibletrial.com slash Sean Chandler. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.